and welcome to Brand for Our Connect. On this edition, we shall commence our series on Nigeria's creative industry, focusing on Nollywood. My guest is an eminent Nollywood personality whose career trajectory has made him an award-winning actor, director, producer, and international motion picture consultant. It is my great pleasure to welcome Francis Owache. Thank you very much, Harry. Um, it's always interesting to have times like this with you. I'm excited any time we need to talk about the motion picture environment, whether in Nigeria, in Africa, or globally. So thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Before we dive into the subjects proper, kindly give us a brief summary of your illustrious journey so far in Nollywood? My career trajectory uh, spans my time on stage as an actor for several years in the mid 80s and of course at that time also I was engaged in various television uh, works um, and I discovered early, early enough that one needed to build capacity and develop different skill sets that will that will become very useful over time. And fortunately, um, when the emergence of Nollywood came, um, I, found, I found it uh, a good space to operate in the environment. Can you also take us through the various milestones in Nollywood industry? If you track back to history, you will realize that filmmaking in Nigeria actually dates back to uh, the, the 50s when um, Johnny Fogali Amata, who is Fred Amata's father, by the way, um, in collaboration with a few foreigners, they made the film, Freedom. Those are, those are important areas. Then, of course, you track back to at the time where the Ogun days were very critical in our environment, making Jaye Semi, making Aye, and fantastic plays. Then Ola Balogun, Baba Salah. The, 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 the journey moved fast up, up till even when Wale Inka made the film, Kongi's Harvest, in, I think it was 1972. Then it grew, it continued to grow until the structural adjustment uh, program introduced by um, President Babangida. Uh, at that time, they could not make films in that format anymore. And everybody, everything actually, as a matter of fact, in the economy nosedived. It gave opportunities for different kind of emergence in the Nigerian motion picture environment, which gave birth to Nollywood. Now, that is one milestone. Of course, in Nollywood, we have also continued to practice with um, different kind of equipments from uh, VHS, super VHS, to Umatic camera, using Betacam camera, and of course, when it came to the digital stage. So, of course, we moved, and then all of us began to await the emergence of the time where we'll begin to distribute our films on cinemas. And this is where we are now. Another milestone is to identify that over time, there were award ceremonies. There were award ceremonies. That you had the, the movie awards that was introduced by Fudge and colleagues. It was very important uh, in our emergence. Of course, there are other award ceremonies like AMA, there's AFRIF, African Film, African um, International Films. There's um, uh, the AMVCA, African Magic, um, created by the African Magic. You know, then other milestones will include the fact that we had, we've now had several film festivals. Film festivals like the Abuja International Film Festival, Zuma International Film Festival. You know, so many film festivals and, and these, are, these are critical and important milestones in the emergence of good motion picture environment. So there are things. We are where we are now, but I think um, a lot still has to be done. How, in your opinion, has the industry fared since the COVID-19 pandemic crept in in 2019 and its attendant crippling of the economy? What do you think stakeholders in the creative value chain need to do for practitioners and other stakeholders now and in the long run? 
Yes, indeed, at the time, the structural adjustment program rejigged a lot of things in the environment. Yes, you were right when you said that um, filmmakers at the time, who in any case needed a lot of foreign exchange, to, to make the films, to do transfers, to do, to do all of the things they needed to do in the celluloid, uh, it, it affected the environment. And so, but you see, that, that effect, you know, opened opportunities. Opened opportunities. Some people, some people even working in the Nigerian Television Authority at the time, who were basically focused on television, had need to step out and they became independent. These were part of the things that introduced the emergence of independent producers and up to the time we now had Living in Bondage, which opened the space even bigger. Take track, track forward, fast forward to um, this, the, the effect of COVID-19. Of course, you know that globally, this was, um, this was very troubling for the entire environment. But even in that challenge as well, it has also thrown off, thrown up different opportunities. I never knew, for instance, that, you know, um, in my work in the environment, I could deal with my clients just by Zoom. We ha we've, had, we've had very important meetings just by Zoom. I didn't need to go out of my office and, and things seemed to have worked. You will know that in corporate environments, where you needed to also stay and have meetings, you could do some, people were having proper board meetings on Zoom. So it opened its own, challenge, um, its own opportunities. Now, that tells us that we must, we must wake up to accepting the emergence of the digital stage. A lot of things have gone digital. And in fact, if your business, if you're, you are running a business and you have not thought of digitization, then you just know that you're having a challenge. Quickly attach that to a digital switch over that Nigeria is still struggling to adapt you know, um, internationally. When the digital switch over becomes, becomes important, I mean, and I'm looking at next year, you will find that there will be more and more independent producers, more and more television stations you can, in a room, have your own TV station, have your niche programs. Everybody will, everybody will decide the kind of programming they want to do and then have a particular target. People who, those are, those are opportunities. So what, what we need to do as a people, as practitioners, is to be able to develop our capacity, build our capacities in different areas of the trade. There are, there, are, there are ways to improve, there are ways to grow in your skill and development. Yes, and finally also, um, it opened us to the likes of Netflix, the likes of Amazon, the likes of Hulu, the likes of HBO. We knew now that a lot of attention is placed on sitting down in your home, sitting down in your office, and then gets the public. Once the public buy into your idea, once the public like what you are doing, they will key in onto that space and um, everybody will become happy. A celebrity with huge following across Nigeria, Africa, and even beyond, do you think top Nollywood practitioners like yourself are doing enough to influence positive attitudes towards nation building and progress among citizens and leaders alike? We can do better. We can all do better. Uh, you know, uh, as practitioners, I think um, a lot of responsibility is also on us because we have huge following across, across board. And so we, we know that the tendency is high that the people will listen to us. But unfortunately, in the space that we are operating, we are doing less and less of the interventions that were necessary. Um, and, and of course, this also affects the general political space. You will recall that even in Nigeria here, at a point, um, very serious contestants, when you, are, when you perceive yourself as uh, you know, a serious person, you will say, oh, politics is um, not something to delve into. But we have learned over time that once you ignore it, you will have other people 
who are not, um, you know, ideal leaders, come into that space and determine your own future. Therefore, I'm saying that practitioners like myself and a lot of other people, we need to do more. We need to constantly engage in the affairs of the country. Um, this is the only country that we have, at least for now, and therefore we must, we must be proactive, we must do a lot of call to action so that people who follow us, people who, who listen to the things we say, will also understand that there are things we all need to do. Listen, we are all, we are answers to the prayers that we seek. When we ignore it, once we ignore it, then you cannot affect the space. So we must put our attention in nation building. When we put our attention to that, it will affect the general space and the practice will become better for all concerned. No doubt, Nollywood has come a long way. But critics believe that there's a lot of upskilling and scaling up to do in the various departments of Nollywood to take it to even greater heights. Can you give us a three-minute blueprint for making the perfect Nollywood blockbuster? I believe a lot that um, story, the number two is story, and the number three is story. What do I mean? A lot of the things will depend on the kind of stories that we tell. We must constantly engage the public with good storytelling. And good storytelling comes with a lot of attributes. What kind of characters are you creating? What kind of dialogues are you giving them? What kind of space are they operating in? What kind of, what kind of emotion, what kind of empathy do you want the audience to follow? You know, when, when you are fully done with your story, and that takes quite a long process, that takes quite a long process, story writing. When you are fully done with that, I think, I think people need to, producers, filmmakers need to focus a lot on project development before even going into that space. And I'm saying project development in the generic sense. It is project development, it's project development, whether in the health sector, whether in engineering, whether in advertising. You must think your project through from beginning to the end. You must see the, the end from the beginning. And so any area that you ignore can bring down the value of your project. And so you must take it gradually. What are the kind of actors you are using? Why are you using them? What are the kind of equipment you are using the film? Why are you using them? What are the kind of crew? What, what's your perception of the cinematography? What's the design of your film? What is, you must look at the sound. You must look at the lighting. You must look at color correction. You must look at audio replacement if necessary. You must look at noise around you. You must look at even the distribution. You must look at the money in. How are you going to recoup money on this project? You must look at it. You must take everything from beginning to the end. But above all, once a project is good on paper, yeah, it's likely to be good on screen. So you have to pay attention on story and story and story. But what about uh, the technical issues? Because that seems to be the area where some critics have um, their issues. You know, um, all of these things I've outlined to you, 70% yeah. of them are technicals. Okay. You know, when I talked about lighting, sound, and a lot of that. And I can tell you for free that indeed... The technicians are improving because a lot of young chaps, a lot of even practitioners like myself, people have exposed themselves to different kind of training and they have acquired the right skills for the technical aspect. Unfortunately, they have played down on the aesthetics and the art of storytelling. When you miss out, when you miss that out, what you will have is technical. Once you have the technical, and then you will see a yearning gap in the creative aspect. And so, you will not have a complete film. But oh, how beautiful it will be when you have great story and then great technical. They come together and become fantastic job. From the inside, can you look into your crystal ball and tell us where you see Nollywood in the next five years? And what should your fans be expecting from you within that same period? Okay, for the first part, um, five years seems like a long time, but it's not too long. But I think it was um, Stephen King in one of his books was saying that um, something about brands, that if you, brands can go away quickly, 
but if they are timeless, they will stay in the minds forever. I'm trying to paraphrase. You know, so we will continue to make works that will become timeless in the minds of the public. It's even happening now. Listen, um, in, in 2018, Jenna Vivian Naji's film, um, Lionheart. Lionheart. Lionheart was acquired, was an original acquisition of Netflix. It has never happened before in the history of uh, filmmaking in Nigeria. And over time, it was submitted uh, for foreign, foreign entry classification in Netflix, in, in the Oscars. That was in 2018. Now, a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers in Nigeria have seen that, which means the possibilities exist. So now Nigeria is one of the recognized um, areas where you have the Oscar selection committee, which means people will make better films that will qualify to represent Nigeria at the Oscars. So you see, it's expanding. So things are getting better. Netflix is here. When you, when you make good quality films, Netflix will buy it. You will have Hulu. You will have Amazon. You will have all manner of people coming after you, so long as you have made good work. So, so in the next five years, I see Nigerian producers up, upscaling, doing better work, and having possibilities, endless possibilities, making timeless projects. For me personally, I am also going to operate in that space. Right now, as I speak to you, I am working on a film project that will meet some of these um, uh, possibilities that we have talked about. So I'm working on a project and I, I trust and I assure the audience that it will be something to really, really talk about in Nigeria. On that note, um, it's really been very, very illuminating talking with a first-class thespian, a first-class director, a first-class producer, uh, Francis Omoche, fondly called Franco Che by his friends and fans in the Nollywood. Um, we want to thank you for coming around to share your thoughts and your expertise with us. And uh, I want to assure you that I'm one of those fans who will be looking forward to your project that's about to hit the screens, so to speak. And of course, we look forward to a greater Nollywood in the years to come. Thank you for coming around. Thank you. Thank you, Nanke Harry Willie. I am delighted. Every time that we have opportunity to talk about issues that will make better the space, it's, it's always exciting for me. So thank you for having me. And I promise you, Nigerians in the creative business will continue to do good works that will entertain you maximally. Yes, I hope you enjoyed our time with Francis Onwache. We want to thank you very much for spending your time with us and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Remember to always keep connected with Brand Power Connect. Thank you.